So, how many of you actually came up with a reasonably trustworthy next action? I'm curious. Oh, okay, cool. How many of you at least found this a constructive two minutes of thinking? You feel a little more on top of your game, a little clearer about what your stuff is. Any of you? Okay, well, welcome to the natural planning model. Now, I'm sure the burning question for many of you is, David, so what? Here's the so what. That's the natural model. Is this the normal model? Is this how your wedding reception was planned? Is this how your offsite was managed? Is this how you launched your product? Is this how your PR campaign was set up? What I've discovered is the natural model is not necessarily the normal one. What's more normal that I've seen is something that I refer to as the unnatural planning model. What's that? You ever had a boss or a manager or a director bring together the team because they're going to try to be collaborative? They bring you all in a room because we're now going to think together about a problem or a project. And they approach this by saying, OK, who's got a good idea here? <laughs> now, where does that automatically you assume that you are in the natural planning model? Because to know a good idea, that's your critical, rational, logical thinking about what's good, better, best. Where's that? Stage four. <clears throat> Stage four. In order to make sure you have the right idea or a good idea, you need to make sure purpose has been defined, that the vision is clear, that you've generated all the, potential, the potentially relevant data that might need to be taken into consideration before you can hope to know what's a good or best idea. Guess what, folks? We now have the genetically modified planning model. <laughs> unnatural. And if you try to start that way, that's so unnatural, people naturally resist. And they don't play. Oftentimes, it's passive resistance. They just, on a team, or even for their own selves, they do that. Then what happens is people don't really plan. And if you don't really plan, what happens? Ah, trouble. It falleth on thy head. Did you get that? I didn't get that. I thought that. And the conflict and the lack of clarity, last minute crises, pressure, stress, no fun, right? But then people in all integrity say, OK, well, I guess we have to handle the situation, and they move into what I've discovered is the reactive planning model. What's that? First approach, <gasps> let's get busy, work harder, four people over time. <laughs> then you get busy, burned out, stressed out people at this thing called, hey, that is not handling it. We need to get organized or reorganized, okay? And then you have spreadsheets and, uh, you know, an analytical reports sprouting spontaneously out of closed offices. Somebody at some point realizes that a well-analyzed problem doesn't handle the problem. You say, well... I guess we need some more creative input. Let's bring everybody together. Let's have a brainstorming. Who's got a good idea? <laughs> right, that doesn't work. They say, well, we must have used up all of our internal creativity. Dried it up on the last reorg. Well, I guess we have to get it from the outside. Time to hire a consultant, that's right. And if they're you know, worth their salt, at some point they're gonna look around and say, well, excuse me, what are you folks trying to do here? People go, God, no wonder we pay this consultant so much money to straighten us out. So folks, it's not a matter of whether you do the natural model, but when and at what cost.